family. This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to shout out to Retro Boxing and Documentaries. This is dedicated to him. Salute to you, brother. I felt bad about the conversation we once had, and also today he was on a live stream. You we were talking about you lost your magazines, and you did rebuild some of that collection, but you never got back and won't get back what you once had. That's just the way it is. Unfortunately, that happened to me. And I lost a lot on my collection. I lost some old record books from the 1800s, early 1900s. It was a collection. I lost, oh man, some posters from Jack Dempsey when he fought George Compontier, Joe Lewis when he fought Max Smiling. These were the original posters. I lost a lot of stuff, but, you know, I still have a tremendous amount. I don't even know where to put everything, but I know what it's like. So I just want to take you on a little tour, brother. You know, out of respect, here we have, in fact, you were talking about this fight today on your live stream with Roy Jones Jr. versus Antonio Tarver, the second fight. Now, Roy Jones went up to meet John Ruiz for the heavyweight championship. He did defeat John Ruiz, and that was the problem. He went up and gained 100, he was 190 pounds, and he went back down to 178 when Antonio Tarver was calling him out. He was going to retire himself at that point in time. But Antonio Tarver kept calling him out, kept heckling him. So finally, you know, the crowd demanded that he face Antonio Tarver. And he did, and he took a beating for 12 rounds. But then it got to a point where Antonio Tarver was going to protest because they gave the decision to Roy Jones, the remained champion. And um, I think it was a draw. I'm not even sure. I think it was a draw. So it got to a point where, you know, hey, they had to do it again. In the second fight, which is what this program is showing, he was knocked out. And Antonio Tarver became the light heavyweight champion. Here you have Andre Ward versus Frotch. And that was in the Super 6 series. And Andre Ward just dominated that series. And he became the champion of that series. Mayweather versus Madonna. They had two fights. And, um, you know, it was what it was. Madonna became rich after that. I don't know what he's doing now. Floyd Mayweather, I'm not sure if that was his 48th fight. Because then he fought Berto. Or that, yeah, that might, yeah, 40, yeah, 48th or 49th, I'm not sure. I'm not too sure. I know he fought twice. Mayweather versus Canelo Alvarez. That was a good fight. Alvarez was coming up. He was undefeated at the time. Mayweather saw that he wasn't experienced enough. He didn't move his feet enough. And that's how Mayweather was able to win the fight. And since then, Canelo Alvarez has been moving his feet. And he's been successful with his fights. As you can see here, Floyd Mayweather versus Antonio Gata. We talked about that fight the other day. I was at that fight in Atlantic City. And um, Gotti didn't have a chance in that fight. It was a no contest. Gotti had no business in there with Mayweather. I appreciate his courage. Two different fighters. Mayweather versus Zab Judah. We talked about that fight. That was a very good fight. There was a, a fight that they were trying to make for a long time. These guys knew each other since the amateurs. And a lot of people gave Zab Judah a shot. Southpaw. You know, they reminded him. Uh, he reminded people of, of uh, Pernell Whitaker. And it just got to a point where he was getting frustrated. He's a front runner. He always has been. And he gasses out towards the, the last 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 rounds. And uh, he's flat-footed at that point. Here you have Morales and Barrera, the third fight, outstanding fight. They had a trilogy. And uh, they gave me a lot of thrills. Two very good Mexican fighters. I remember Barrera, the, Lord, the first fight he lost was against Junior Jones. And he fought Junior Jones the second time. And he just couldn't beat Junior Jones because of the style. Here's the Super 6. Here you have Mayweather versus Madonna. That's the second fight. Ortiz versus Berto, the second fight. Here you have Cotto versus Margarito, the second fight. That was at that fight in Madison Square Garden when Cotto defeated Margarito. Margarito gave Cotto the beating the first time. And uh, they believe it was because of plaster of Paris that was in his gloves. Because they found that when he was fighting Mosley. So they had a rematch in Madison Square Garden. And they stopped the fight. Because Margarita was taking a beating. 
Oscar De La Hoya versus Sugar Shane Mosley, the second fight. It's called the Redemption. Uh, that was a very good fight. That was a good fight. I remember seeing that fight. It was for the Super Welterweight Championship. Here you have Vargas and Mosley. Another good fight. They fought twice. And Mosley won twice. Tony Otava versus Glenn Johnson. They fought twice. I mean, a lot of these fights are... Here's another fight. Uh, we just talked about it. Hopkins and Taylor. Fought twice. Amazing. Mosley and Winky Wright fought twice. They fought two times. And for me, Winky Wright was such an underestimated fighter. He, he actually won the fight against Fernando Vargas. He was robbed in that bout. He fought Hopkins. He fought Taylor. Here you see him fighting Sugar Shane Mosley. Manny Pacquiao. The left hand that Hatton took on that fight was unbelievable. Amazing. Amazing. I'm surprised he's walking around today. That was a brutal right hand. Here's a rematch, another one, with Sugar Shane Mosley. Fought a lot of rematches. Vernon Forrest, I was at the very first fight when he fought Vernon Forrest at Madison Square Garden. And at that time, the golden boy was Sugar Shane Mosley. Vernon Forrest, they tried to build up that fight with Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas the Hitman Hearns. But it was reversed. Hitman Hearns knocked out Sugar Ray Leonard, basically. Uh, you know, it, it went to distance, but after that cut, Mosley was never the same. He was really afraid of Vernon Forrest. He was. He lost so many amateurs. He knew he couldn't beat Vernon Forrest. And he had a little bit more confidence as a professional because he was beating up all the lightweights. And when he went up to welterweight, couldn't do anything with Vernon Forrest. Salute to Vernon Forrest. Rest in peace to him. Gotti Ward. Phenomenal. What else can I say? They had a trilogy. Give us a lot of thrills. Outstanding. Trinidad versus Ronald Winky Wright. Once again, Winky Wright had a lot of opportunities. Just came up short. We're talking about two fabulous fighters right here. Trinidad and uh, Ronald Winky Wright. He had Trinidad versus Mayoga. Mayoga was just one of them fights. He was smoke before a fight, smoke after a fight. But he came in there to win. I remember when he defeated William Joppy. And um, that was <laughs> that was an amazing fight. I was at that fight as well. That was Madison Square Garden. So salute to Felix Tito Trinidad. I was actually at the fight when he fought Bernard Hopkins at Madison Square Garden. A uh, salute to these guys. Here you have De La Hoya versus Campos. I was at that fight. A very, very good fight. De La Hoya, they gave him the decision. I believe the decision was for the World Super Welterweight Championship. And here you have Bernard Hopkins and Oscar De La Hoya. As you can see, September 18th. Very good fight. And uh, now this is Ward and Foss. Now here's the thing. September 17th, that was the one calendar date that they had for that fight. And take you back up here. The other calendar date they had September, um, Saturday, October 29th. Two different dates. So that's just something for, for the brother here. Mayweather versus Canelo. Mayweather versus Madonna. I just wanted to shout out a brother, retro boxing and, and uh, documentaries. Salute to you. This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Salute to all my subscribers. Chris Sugar Anderson, salute to you, brother. In the corner. Peace.